Welcome back everybody and I hope you're excited because we're about to bake a beautiful gluten-free sourdough boule, a nice round loaf. So let's get to it. So my oven is now warmed up uh, with the Dutch oven inside at 475 degrees Fahrenheit. So I am ready to take out my dough. And before I do that, I like to get all of my ingredients ready, out and ready so that it can be quick because we don't want to take too long once we take our dough out and score it before we get it into the Dutch oven with gluten-free um, dough especially. So we want to be as efficient as possible. So what I have here are a couple of ice cubes. And now this is to do with helping our dough to rise. So I have some hot plates here to place my Dutch oven on. I've got my parchment paper, which I'm going to use to flip out my dough onto. And I have a bread lom. And you do not need a bread lom. You can just use a really sharp knife. To score your dough as it's rising, it needs a place to release. And it basically, if you don't have a place to release, it just kind of goes everywhere. Whereas if you score it, you can control exactly how the opening and the rise occurs. So it can kind of occur in the way that you want it to. So you have more control. I'm taking my dough out of the refrigerator, out of its plastic bag. In this case, I wanted to show you that you can do this without a banneton, but my favorite is to use the banneton but it's not absolutely necessary. So that's why I wanted to show you how you can do it with just a bowl and um, a nice cloth. We're going to put the um, parchment paper on top, place our hand on top of it and really ever so gently flip it over and then hold our towel and lift our bowl out. And look at that, it's a beautiful shape. Now, sometimes when you don't have the banneton, you get these funny little creases from your towel and that's okay. So the last thing that you need to have out before you get your dough out and not forget like me, is a little bit of brown rice flour to dust the top. You can also use sorghum or um, buckwheat, but I like to use this. So now once I get it flipped out, I'm going to act fairly quickly. I like to spray it with water, just from a water bottle that I use just for baking, just to add a little bit more of that, like I said, vapor effect. Then I sprinkle it. You don't have to do this either. If you don't like, it gives it more of an artesian sort of rustic look, but that's really all it does. And you can use stencils. I like to use stencils and I can show you that another time. I really highly recommend that your very first time, you just literally do a really simple score. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to show you how to score it the same way that I would score when I'm very first making my gluten containing dough. So when you score, you want it to be 90 degrees to the surface of the dough. However, the dough is not flat. It's a curve. So if I'm doing it right in the middle, I would do this. However, I'm not. I'm My dough is doing this. So if I want to be 90 degrees, I actually have to keep tipping my razor. So my knife is going to go, usually I'm going to just do like a two lines and, and a like an X's and O's pattern this time. So I'm going to slant it at about 45 or even a little bit more of an angle and I'm just going to slice. And I want to go in not too deep. And if you don't go in quite enough, just do it again. And sometimes you get a little bit coming off on the top with the gluten-free and that's actually just because it's wet. So I'm going to do this side as well. It's hard to do on this angle with the camera, but so I'm about a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to come here and that's not, doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to slice across here and you don't want it to take too long. Um, kind of did that one, not quite the right angle and that's okay. So now that it's cut open, I don't want to take too long before I get my dough into my Dutch oven. So I'm just going to lift it and move it out of the way and grab my Dutch oven out of the oven. I'll be right back. So remember, it's really hot, so be really, really careful. Just lift your lid off. That's why you have all these uh, hot plates. And then I'm going to so gently, ever so gently, place my dough in my bin, or in my uh, Dutch oven. Just make sure it's not really creased. Then I take my two already melting ice cubes, I throw them in underneath so that they don't, you can hear it sizzling already and probably even see some of the steam. Put the lid back on. 
I'm going to pop it in the oven and I'll keep talking. The oven had been preheating to 475. I have my Dutch oven right in the center of my oven. And as soon as I put it in, I turned the heat down to 450 Fahrenheit. And like I said before, if you don't have a Dutch oven, that's totally okay. You just need a baking stone or something like that that can maintain the heat and you can put your dough on. Here I'm showing another boule that I baked that was on my pizza stone. So there's lots of things that you can do. The other thing that you can't see from this picture is that I have put a bowl, um, a, an oven proof dish, kind of like a casserole dish that will withstand the heat, the 450, and I fill it with boiling water just before I put the boule in the oven. This way, there's still that vapor effect of the steam. So this was a wonderful idea that I found from other bakers that I have realized works really well. So if you don't have a Dutch oven, that is something that you can do. And another thing to add to that is that you don't have to have an expensive Dutch oven. I certainly don't. I have one that's just from the superstore and it was on sale on clearance actually. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. All you need is a really basic Dutch oven. So here's our little sample. Don't forget to bake it because it becomes the best taste tester. So give it a little score, just something simple, and then throw it in the oven on a little baking stone. I have some little square ones that I got at Lee Valley and I just throw it on there and I just watch it as it's baking and I pull it out sooner than the others. And it kind of goes to show that you don't have to have a Dutch oven or even steam because we'll watch and this one will just puff right up and double in size. You see that? It totally doubled in size. And the amazing part is that that doubling happened within the first minute and a half to two minutes. So what that's telling me is that perhaps my large loaf is really only rising for the first few minutes. And that makes sense to me because as the temperature of the dough goes up, the yeast would start to die off and they can only produce carbon dioxide to a certain point. So when you first put your dough into the oven, make sure you set a timer for 35 minutes. And when the timer goes off, give it a spin. And that kind of keeps it an even cook. Take the lid off and you're going to see that it has given a beautiful rise. And then just quickly check your sample dough. Make sure you cook that one. It's your taste test for later. And I'm going to try to give you a peek. And look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. It looks beautiful. It's been 25 minutes. So I'm going to check on my loaf. And if it looks brown enough for you, you can take it out. And I actually like it like this. It looks beautiful. So I highly recommend having a wire rack for your loaf to cool down in. But look at that beauty. Doesn't that look amazing? So you just carefully lift it out and then make sure to move your Dutch oven away so you don't burn yourself. I just place mine on my stove and then I just slide it off carefully. You can see the beautiful loaf here. Doesn't it look lovely? It's pretty hot to touch at the moment, but I will show you in a few minutes. So let's have a look at the inside of our little sample. It's got a nice crispy edge and it's not always perfectly cooked. It's a little brown on the bottom, which is actually okay. You can hear it sound nice and solid. So let's cut through it and see how it looks. I truly don't think you need a lot of fancy tools to make a beautiful loaf of sourdough. However, a good bread knife is one of those ones that makes a huge difference. Sourdough can be very hard to cut through without a good knife. This knife um, is what I got from Lee Valley, of course, my favorite kitchen store. So let's have a cut through it, see how it sounds. Don't hear the hard crust and oh, look at that. Look at the open crumb, it's beautiful. So now this is where I'm saying that the sample is so important. You could see the crispy and I don't know if you can tell because it's so tiny. You could see the beautiful open crumb and you could see it's kind of spongy on the inside, like it's nice and moist on the inside and it's crispy on the outside. So I'm going to try a taste of it. I just love trying it when it is nice and warm and toasty. Okay, I'm going to try it. Mmm, oh my goodness. <laughs> this one, 
seriously taste the most this formula that I developed the most like regular sourdough of any of the recipes because to me it's not it's more like a white sourdough I just love it I hope you enjoy it as much as I do so before it cools down because the crust changes when it cools down I want to show you the bottom and you can hear the sound when it sounds like that you know it's done so if it doesn't give you that hollow sound when you tap on the bottom, pop it back in the oven for a little bit. If you cut into this dough right now, the problem is it's going to actually stick to your knife. So you'll end up with a gummy sort of film on your knife and then you'll know your loaf was undercooked. So I'm going to leave mine to rest now until my kids get home from school this afternoon because I know I won't be able to stop them from cutting into it. And then we'll cut into it and I will show you the inside. I'm excited. I hope you are as well. Enjoy. I am seriously excited to cut into this loaf. And it does have quite a good ear, you can see. The way that I uh, scored it, just kind of let it open up. So this isn't a fancy scoring. This was just to show you basic, basic basics. So let's cut it open and see. And see how it looks. Oh, it sounds just like a regular sourdough. Okay, the moment of truth. Oh, look at that. It's just beautiful. There's no gumminess. There's no, it's not over fermented very, like I thought, maybe a teeny bit. I thought maybe this loaf was a little over fermented. It's actually quite nice. I think it could have risen a little bit more and we're going to talk about that too. So I'm going to give it a taste and let you know how it tastes. And it tastes absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoy it as much as my family has. And like I said about the rise, it could definitely be improved on my loaf. So if this happens to you, please don't worry. It was still quite a good rise, but I've had better. And you'll have that, especially with gluten-free sourdough. You may think you've got everything perfect and then one factor changes and the rise goes plop. <laughs> so it's pretty funny at times. But remember, if you're at a lower elevation than I am, you'll also need to decrease your hydration slightly, most likely. So just give it a try and see how you like it. And I hope you really enjoy it. I've enjoyed being with you for this last two weeks. And if you have any questions at all, please just let me know. I'll continue baking loaves and adding the recipes and formulas to my site. And of course, I've been videoing while baking my sourdough, so I get often very distracted and things don't always go perfectly. So I'll do my best to put a few more on, maybe even make this exact same loaf again and show you the better rise. So I hope that you have good luck with yours tonight and it works out perfectly for you and you enjoy it. I sure hope that you've enjoyed this series and that you learned everything that you thought that you would. My hope for you is that you can move forward from here and follow all sorts of different recipes and formulas and make all sorts of delicious gluten-free goodies. And I'd really appreciate if you have a moment, if you could do a review and a comment down below this post and also to share this picture on your Pinterest page. Take care everyone and enjoy your sourdough journey. Bye for now.